Welcome to the heart of the Red Bull Ring. The racetrack itself, 50 meters behind me here. And if you follow me around here, this is the campsite in full operation. We're here because of this house here. To tell us about it is perhaps its most famous resident, Toto Wolf. Now, Toto, great to see you. There is clearly a story about this house. What is it? Yeah, the story about this house is that I, that I lived in the house for many years. Um, I worked as an instructor uh, in, in a local racing school to somehow afford my own racing driving. And uh, this was the farmhouse that uh, was my home. It was a nice place because it was down to the basics. I, I got my um, butter bread in the morning and an egg and a glass of milk. And this is when we dashed off to the, to the main thing and it was um, instructing and driving racing cars on the old Österreichring and that was great. Whose racing school was it? Uh, Walter Lechner Racing School, which back in the days was the most famous racing school in Europe. It was uh, after the Jim Russell Racing School, I think the only one in continental Europe. And Walter eventually become, became my mentor and manager. Come with me. Let's go and have a look in this barn up here. Well, we're in the heart of the farmyard here, Toto, and uh, there's a hay barn here. I dread to think what went on in here. Age yeah, 18. It was not spectacular when I was 18. I was a late picker. Now, look, here's a surprise. This is Walter Lechner. <laughs> I had a hard school. I was mentored by you um, and managed later, but it was the mo I got the most important information for life from, from Walter. Walter, the it's school. Nice that he says that, huh? Nice, the yeah. school of hard knocks. Is that what you were? Well, I'm always straightforward. I think if you ask, students do the same thing. And uh, it was very good, actually. It was in pole position from the for the European Championship round. But then he just missed it, messed it up on the first corner. Do you remember that? Oh, I got, we, it was in Zolder and we were taking the car back from Zolder to Salzburg where Walter lived. And I got a 10 hour, um, 10 hour <laughs> How do you reflect on those years with Walter? It was all the basics that, that I learned because I, I wanted it so much and I didn't have... Wanted to, what? To be a racing driver. Oh. And um, it was clear that the odds were against me already back then because of my size and I didn't have the funding and the background in, in go-karting. But with Walter was, was very important. I did so many laps walking around the Österreich ring and showing people the lines and explaining how to drive that it actually sunk into me. It, it became natural. And uh, with Walter, uh, Walter's mentorship. Does what you learned back then help you in your dealings with your drivers today? Do you understand them a little bit better because of your own experience? Yes, I think so, because I thought, I've done so, so much driving in those years and in the following years also in the touring cars or rally cars that I have a basic understanding about the physics of a racing car. I know what it does and I can relate to what I hear. Nevertheless, what Lewis or Valtteri do in a Formula One car is on a totally different level to what I've ever done. But it's, I would say the basic understanding is important. So I think, Walter, you made Toto. No, no, no. <laughs> I would say definitely it helped when you have someone older who just tells you the lines and the truths. It's very important. The voice of reason, Walter Lechner. Walter, great to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's head this way, Toto. <laughs> Here we are, Polish mother, Romanian father, schooling in Vienna. Where did this passion for motorsport first come from? There was no interest from my side for motor racing because in our family it was more, there wasn't really the background or the funds to, for any extracurricular activities. It was about the school and, and nothing else. And I, I um, discovered motor racing when I was 17 years old. I was uh, visiting a friend who was driving in Formula 3 and I was shocked. I mean, it bit me. You hadn't watched Formula 1 on the, on the TV or...? Rarely. I, of course I knew Nicky and Gerhard and, and all the Austrian drivers, uh, but uh, I didn't relate to it. You stopped driving but remained determined to stay involved in Formula 1 or in motorsport? No, actually, when, when my driving ended, it was a bitter realization because my sponsor, the only sponsor I had, really pulled out. And it was clear that I wouldn't be able to finance the next steps. And insofar, when I decided to call it a day, um, it, was not an, it was not an easy moment. 
do you miss it? I missed it a lot at the beginning, but then somehow my focus shifted to the business life. And for just about 10 years, I had no interest in motor racing. I, 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 lost, I lost any interest. And then, of course, you then became a shareholder in Williams in 2009, and the rest, as they say, is history. Yes, I started as driving for fun uh, when I was 30 again and rediscovered it. Rather than playing tennis or golf, I spent my weekends on, on racetracks. And this is then somehow I, I achieved to merge the two worlds. The, the interest for, for driving, um, which faded, and then the interest for the business side of motor racing. Final question. What advice would you give to young guys starting out now who want to become Formula One drivers? Be very honest to yourself. Is this something that you do really well? Are you better than your peers? Have you got a talent for it and the passion? And if you doubt, do something else. Because it's in, we're in a specialist's world and we have to identify where we are good in and then concentrate on your strengths.